Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you may be, across the planet and around the world. My name is Greg Prescott from in5d.com and in5d.net. And today we're going to show physical proof of how sound vibration can affect density and how this can benefit you. Did you ever wonder why Tibetan monks chant? The Om is an important Buddhist mantra that symbolizes birth, death, and life. It's also the sound of a commonly seen sacred spiritual symbol in Dharmic religions. In Hinduism, it represents the essence of the ultimate reality, which is consciousness. It refers to the inner self or Atman, as well as what is referred to as Brahman, which represents ultimate reality, entirety of the universe, truth, divine supreme spirit, cosmic principles, and knowledge. We've all used various mantras at some point in our lives. Many of these mantras are in conjunction with the law of attraction, where thoughts and intentions manifest reality. It's a sacred spiritual incantation made before and during the reciting of spiritual texts, during prayers, in ceremonies of rites of passage, such as weddings, and during meditative and spiritual activities, such as yoga. Dissonant bass frequencies carry their own vibrations. Check this out. When this guy cranks up his bass to extraordinary dissonant levels, watch what happens physically to his car. As you can see, the metal, plastic, and glass all reacted to this level of frequency. The literal density of these materials vibrated at such a rate that it was physically captured on film. Now, the study of cymatics has shown us that different frequencies produce different patterns. If sound has the capability of creating change in physical elements, then what can it do in terms of healing ourselves? I'd like to introduce you to Dr. Royal Reif. His name should be known in every home. He invented a beam ray machine that, well, I can't say cured on YouTube. So let's just say he worked miracles for terminally ill patients from cancer, but he was silenced because the cancer industry was never interested in giving us a cure when there's so much money available in big pharma treatments and for research centers pretending to find cures for cancer. Reif began his cancer research in 1922, but it took 10 years before he was able to isolate the VX virus, which is a cancer microorganism. A year later, Reif invented the universal microscope in which a light source technology could magnify an object 60,000 times its size. Because of his invention, Reif was the first person to see a live virus. Once Reif was able to determine the main oscillation rate for each organism, he would then try to destroy it with light frequency resonance. Each microbe has a natural frequency that it resonates with, so when Reif increased their natural oscillations, the organism became distorted and disintegrated from structural stresses. More importantly, no surrounding tissue was harmed from these oscillations. As part of his research in 1934, Reif's machine 
worked miracles for 14 out of 16 terminally ill cancer patients within two months. The remaining two miraculously recovered within the following six weeks, resulting in a 100% miraculously recovered rate. Please allow me to introduce you to the late Dr. Masaru Emoto, who was a Japanese scientist and water researcher. His findings revealed the true nature of water and how thoughts and vibration affect the molecular structure of water. In his years of water research through the high-speed photography of thousands of water crystals, Dr. Emoto has shown the most beautiful crystals are those formed after the water is exposed to the words love and gratitude. He discovered that water from clear springs and water that has been exposed to loving words show brilliant, complex, and colorful snowflake patterns, while water from polluted sources or water exposed to negative thought forms gave incomplete asymmetrical patterns with dull colors. The fact that the human body is made of 70% water, our thoughts and our spoken words can have profound implications on our health and well-being of the planet. So how is water and consciousness tied together and related to humans and plants? One of the original pioneers in water consciousness studies, Dr. Marcel Vogel, determined that when bulk water was in the process of freezing, excess energy is extracted from the water. At this point, the molecules start to spin and linked together in the pattern of a tetrahedron. Dr. Vogel also noted that at this juncture, water develops a consciousness, a memory, a knowing of what they were designed to do and to be. What Dr. Vogel found out is that the energy of the mind projected through a crystal will structure water, which also corresponds with Dr. Masaru Emoto's work with how consciousness affects water and water crystals. As many of you who have followed in 5D for a while have known that I've been working on my DNA for a number of years. According to the research of Greg Braden, we only have 20 of the 64 codons in our DNA turned on. To show that vibration is the very foundation of existence, Hans DNA developed what is known as cymatics in the 1940s to show that when vibrations of sound are passed through a form of media, there is a set pattern that will follow. When the frequency increases, the media develops into a more complex pattern. This is precisely what is happening to our Earth and to humanity. There are 64 possible codes of amino acids in our DNA structure made from four elements, carbon, oxygen, hydrogen, and nitrogen. By any means of logic, we should have all 64 codes activated within our DNA structure. Yet we presently only have 20 active codes. We have 64 possibilities. 64 possibilities. And of these 64 possibilities, it appears that only 20 of these codes are turned on right now for us. The 20 amino acid touches where it crosses this double helix is what determines where the site is that that code will either be turned off or turned on. If we're going to have an antenna at this site, it will only be turned on if the wave of emotion crosses this, um, this double helix. Well, this is really interesting for us because two things. First of all, uh, the waves of emotion. Researchers have determined that you and I are primarily capable of only two emotions many derivatives of those emotions and two primary emotions fear and love fear and love well fear is a long slow wave of emotion so this wave of fear is a long slow wave and touches relatively few sites on this dna so an individual living in fear is limited to the number of antenna that they have available to them Whereas an individual uh, living in the pattern of love, this is love in DNA. You can see it's, it's a higher frequency 
shorter uh, wavelength, we have many more potential sites for coding uh, along that genetic pattern. Why are so many codons turned off? What if you were able to turn on all of the beneficial codons in your DNA? Hypothetically, you could do anything. Every psychic gift and ability would instantly open up for you. You could manifest out of thin air, teleport yourself anywhere, make yourself invisible, change your appearance, and most importantly, heal yourself and others. I'm going to take a quick break here because a lot of people have asked me about the shirts I wear during these videos. You can find them at N5D Quantum Tie-Dye at N5D.net. I make each shirt by hand and use gemstones and crystals in the chakra dyes. And I add in a little 99.9% .9 quartz crystal sand from Siesta Key in order to supercharge the gemstones and crystals. People really dig these shirts and we have a ton of testimonials that you can check out for yourself at n5d.net. This particular shirt that I'm wearing is called Awakening Third Eye and Crown Chakras Ice Dye Quantum Tie Dye T-shirt. The ice dyed shirts always give you a unique one of a kind pattern, well, like all tie dye, but with the ice dye shirts, it's always something a little extra special. I'll leave a link for this and all of our ice dye shirts in the more info section of this video, or simply visit n5d.net to see the entire selection. Okay, so we were talking about opening up all of the beneficial codons in our DNA. We've determined that Dr. Masaro Emoto's research concluded that water has consciousness. Based on this premise, I decided to experiment with water, ho'oponopono, sigils, and positive affirmations. I bought an ozone generator to infuse my water with extra oxygen. You can find the one I use on Amazon for around $90. There's a link in the more info section to the exact one that I use. In addition, as per Dr. Emoto's research into the consciousness of water, I added affirmations and Ho'oponopono. Ho'oponopono is the Hawaiian code of forgiveness that follows four simple mantras. I love you. I'm sorry. Please forgive me and thank you. So because Dr. Emoto's research showed us that water has consciousness, I combined Ho'oponopono with a positive self-affirmation. My affirmation is all of my codons are open. I say this both forwards and backwards. Reverse language is an occult science that has been used for many years and is known as the law of reversal. A good example of this would be how Oprah's studio is called Harpo, which is Oprah reversed. So all of my codons are open when reversed is Nipo Era Snodok Infla. Little known trivia fact is that the Beatles were into reversals. Although reversals are used in many black magic circles, it can be used for white magic with pure intentions. I decided to take this one step further after researching the power of sigils. A sigil is an inscribed or painted symbol considered by many to have magical powers. Many corporate logos use symbols as a way to subconsciously influence us. A perfect example would be the shell logo, which innocently looks like a shell, but it actually represents the sun and sun worshiping, which pre-existed before many religious belief systems. Exxon uses symbols and sigils as a way to represent Saturn. In astrotheology, Saturn is Satan. Did you ever wonder why we exchange rings during wedding ceremonies? The rings represent the rings of Saturn, Satan. Look no further than the pre-Christian Christmas time celebration of Saturnalia, which was a week of debauchery and drunkenness. In this world of polarity and duality, the same practices can be done with pure intent. 
I decided to make a sigil glass that contained my affirmation. This is what it looks like. After pouring water into my sigil glass, I asked creator, source, universe, spirit guides, guardian angels, friends and family on both sides of the veil, galactic neighbors and friends, my higher self and mother earth to help me achieve my goals. I then speak my affirmations to the water and then I apply Ho'oponopono. I finish by saying, please send these messages to every cell in my body. Namaste. The following is an excerpt from the article entitled, Your Emotional, Physical, Mental, and Spiritual State Changes Every Seven Years. Most of us have heard the old saying that every cell in the body is changed over a period of seven years, but recent investigation has uncovered facts of far more significance to us as human beings. This concerns the emotional, physical, and mental changes that seem to occur in approximately seven year intervals. Of course, there are no fixed boundaries, and so one may have to achieve these levels of maturity at any period of our life. Perhaps this is why Tibetan monks are able to do remote viewing after spending more than seven years in meditation. Is it possible that their DNA changed as well? With this in mind, it may only take seven years or less to change our own DNA. So what's the first thing I would do if all of my codons were open? Well, it'd actually be two things. And I could do them both in less than a minute. So in no particular order, I would connect my higher self with every other higher self on this planet and ask them if they wanted to be healed of anything. After getting their permission, I could heal the world instantly and nobody would have to know it was me. Well, except for you guys, because I kind of spilled the beans. No! The other thing I would do is to lay my hands on Mother Earth and heal her air, water, and food supplies. What are your thoughts? What would you do if all of your codons were open and you could do virtually anything? Let us know in the comments section below. As you can see, sound and vibration can work miracles if we actually take the time to implement sound and vibration into our everyday lives. I'm going to wrap it up at that. If you're watching live on YouTube, I'll be hanging out for a little while longer. But if not, until the next time, I'm Greg Prescott from In5D.com and In5D.net, sending you all infinite love and light. Namaste.